Today, we're going to be talking about the best ways to get thousands of gems for free in Rise of Kingdoms. What's going on, guys? Cheers. Now, this is probably one of the most requested videos that I and probably all of the other content creators get for Rise of Kingdoms. There's lots of people who want to know, how can I get a ton of gems for free in this game? So I broke open the notepad on the phone here, okay? And I laid in bed before and I typed up a little note about all the cool ways that I think you can get gems for free in this game. Now, later in the video, we're going to talk about who should be doing these things and if it's worth it for you. Because yes, there are ways you can in fact get thousands of gems for free every single day free to play but it comes at a cost and that cost is grinding now whether it's grinding events or constantly sending out gatherers to gem nodes or grinding barbarians you're gonna have to grind if you want to get this stuff for free speaking of barbarians i'm also going to show you later in the video a way that you can kill three four five barbarians for the cost of a single barbarian attack and it's nearly instantaneous i'm sure some of you guys maybe have seen it but for those of you who haven't it's going to be super super helpful especially if you're free to play okay with all of that out of the way let's jump into the list here okay the first thing that we're going to talk about is the most obvious thing and that is your daily quests okay i know i know but some people get all the way up to 80 or 90 and they don't finish their dailies because they log off guys you have to get to 100 here and you get 100 free gems okay not only that you get a bunch of other stuff here that's super useful magic boxes everything it, you, you have to do it okay so this would be a no-brainer that's why we're getting it out of the way do your dailies now the second way to get gems for free is to go into the event calendar and see what events are going on right now and coming up and do every single one of them yes you're going to be grinding out all of the events some events don't give gems at all like hunt for history now these rewards are very good and you should get as much of these rewards for free as possible but you know there's plenty of different ways that you can get gems for free for example this is the game of power event and most players don't push too hard in these types of events only because they usually save all of their resources for mightiest governor events and zenith of power but if you can get into the top 20 here right you can get 300 gems for free now again you might have to compete a little bit so you have to be really careful here but this is a way that if you're maybe in an older or a dead kingdom you can get some gems for free another obvious one is arc of osiris okay if you can get into the golden battlefield arcs of osiris you're going to get some gems whether you win or you lose you got to just make sure you participate okay so make sure you go through and just do all the events again this is another one of those tips that is so obvious especially if you're a free-to-play player you've probably been doing this but i have to get it out of the way because a lot of times players will just ignore some of these events and you just can't do that if you want to get gems for free the next thing we're going to talk about is alliance gifts okay more specifically the rare gifts on the right tab here you guys already know this is what you get when alliance members make purchases in rise of kingdoms now if you're a free-to-play player this is free things free gems that you can get right obviously a lot of these purchases may not come with gems some of them do come with gems obviously the higher the uh the cost of the bundle the higher the rewards for your alliance and thus for you so in this instance you can see i get handful of gems here and there it depends on the types of bundles your alliance mates are buying so you may be thinking okay omni arc that's great but i can't control that well you sort of can you sort of can because you can position yourself in a way through diplomacy to get yourself into an alliance where you are in an alliance where lots of people are spending money the easiest way to do this is to be an active member in your kingdom be in kingdom chat be an alliance chat make friendships and get people to trust you get people to like you form those bonds this is a social game okay you should be doing this anyway it's one of the best parts about rise of kingdoms in my opinion now if it is an alliance that is highly competitive maybe it's like an osiris league alliance right it's going to be difficult to get into that alliance and those are the ones that usually spend the most so you may have to bargain with some people in that alliance and say hey you know i have two or three farm accounts i can actually send you guys resources every kvk or maybe every month or whatever in exchange for me hanging out in this alliance during maybe the off season or maybe during certain events or something like that and again even if you're a free-to-play player just being super active every single day is actually really valuable to a high powered kingdom because those people who are spending a lot of money in the game probably don't have as much time to spend in the game that's why they're spending now of course maybe they're just addicted to rise of king 
playing games like many of us are but having some highly active and engaged free to play players in your alliance is going to be super super crucial for the success of that alliance having somebody always online to place markers or to put down the alliance pit or something like that there's a lot that you can do and a lot of value you can bring to a super active alliance as a free to play player and if you can convince them that you can do those things for them then they will likely let you in at least for some period of time and hopefully you'll get a bunch of free gems from their purchases hopefully you're not like me and getting 10 silver keys from a golden chest this really seriously breaks my heart Lilith why do you have to do this to me the next thing I'm going to talk about is gathering gems and this is where we start to get into the really juicy stuff here okay if you are dedicated if you are grinding you can get tons of gems every single day by gathering them on the map with a couple of tricks that I'm going to show you here now the thing about gathering gems on the map is that a you can't just search for them here on the bottom bar you actually have to go out and find them on you know out in the open field right uh, they also don't have that many gems within them and especially you know people are really going to be looking for the level twos the level threes uh and, and i don't know if there's anything higher than that but if there is it's probably on the kvk map closer to the center but regardless the easiest way to find the gem deposits on the map is to zoom out a little bit uh on the map and this is where you can get the most amount of stuff to load on the screen at once usually you know you pan around a little bit and you wait a second for it to load and you just look for the little gem icon and that's sort of the fastest way that i've found really this is like the only way to do it honestly um and once you find a couple and you can see here i think i found yeah two of them right here especially this level two you're going to want to send certain commanders to these nodes and there's a strategy here and it's really for a specific type of player and you remember i said you're gonna have to grind to get this for free but it is possible if i were going to gather gems in rise of kingdoms every single day there's a couple of things that you would need to do first you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna send out your troops okay what you want to do is send two commanders that have a skill that give you an additional 10 percent resources upon completion of that node so constance is the easiest example that we have here her fourth skill gives you 10 percent resources and then of course we would change joan of arc to either sunduk which maybe you don't have her expertise if you're free to play but certainly you would have matilda expertise as free to play uh, at some point and her expertise does give you an additional 10 percent resources why would you pick these two well 10 percent per commander that's 20 percent additional resources and yes that does apply to gems uh next what you want to do is don't just send a small 500 amount of of, of units here you want to send the maximum amount right you want to have a huge load here that's what she said massive load by the way ladies and gentlemen and the reason that you're sending way more tier one siege yes tier one siege than you need to is because you don't want to go back to your city every single time you complete a gem node because roughly speaking you're going to you're going to get like one gem per minute right uh, i'm going to go ahead and i think i gathered some gems the other day because i knew i was going to make this video and i wanted to test this out yes so as you can see here i gathered from a level one gem deposit this took about 10 minutes and i got a total of 13 gems now we got 10 percent extra from constance 10% extra from Matilda that would bring us up to 12 gems so where did that third gem come from well I'll show you right now okay go in and we're going to take a look at the talents on my constants and you can take a look here on the top part of the gathering tree the more the better gives you six percent additional resources upon completion now that's great uh but that really wouldn't round up full to a full gem right because that would really just be you know with the two commanders plus this that's 26 percent uh, and you're not gonna have 0.6 of a gem right the other five percent comes from the uh, full forest guardian set now this is going to be maybe a little bit difficult for you to obtain as a free-to-play player but if you can get your hands on the forest guardian set then having all four pieces on your primary gatherer will give you an extra five percent resources which brings us up to a total of 11 percent with the talent and with this uh set of four and overall that's a 31 percent increase in the amount of resources you're bringing back now that's useful for any gathering out in the open field especially if you're gathering from your alliance resource pit but for the example of this video it's going to be gathering from the resource the gem deposits out on the open field now remember i said you're going to gather about one gem per minute so that means you have to be able to get come on and play the game pretty much every 10 20 30 minutes because you don't want your 
gatherers to go home right because the odds are you're not going to have a ton of these gem deposits just lying around your city you're going to have to probably travel pretty far for some of these gem deposits after you've started farming a bunch of them right so uh, ideally what i would do is i would send my gatherers here and once this is finished i would be online to send my gatherers to the next one and when this is finished i would you know at that point i would have to look for where is the next uh, gem deposit that i'm going to look for right and of course you know this depends on your on your kingdom some kingdoms there's tons of free to play players who are doing this other kingdoms obviously like mine right now th there's really nobody competing for these gem nodes because I, I've I haven't seen someone in these gem nodes in a while wouldn't it have been so funny if I said that and this player just went and grabbed them <laughs> Now, another really important tip for gathering gems is make sure you have the modified axle at three. This is going to give you 30% extra March speed and really time is gems in this scenario because the amount of time you spend marching to the next gem deposit is time wasted, right? So you want to move as fast as possible around the map, which is really nice. And I guess it should be noted that you do need to at least get the jewelry uh, technology to start gathering gems. You can't just gather gems right at the beginning of the game. And finally, cutting and polishing at the end of the economic tree will increase gem gathering speed speed by 35%. Now, this, you know, doesn't seem like that much because there's really not that many gems per deposit anyway, but you're going to have to do this to get tier five troops. Anyway, you're gonna have to max out the economic tree. So regardless, you're going to have to do this. You might as well do it early. So that way you can start gathering gems if you want to. Now here is the catch, right? Here is the catch. Yes. You can have five marches out in the open field at all times, all gathering gems. And let's say you're on all day, right? And every time a gem node is finished, you, you were able to find another one. Let's just say that there was no restriction on the supply of these nodes, right? You were just constantly able to find them. The catch is that if you're doing that, you're not gathering actual resources, right? You're not going to gather any wood, food, stone, gold, things that you need to fight. You can't just have only gems, right? So when you think about it, what is, you know, 30 gems worth of resources, right? Like you have to take that into account. So if you're always gathering gems, that means you're not gathering these other resources. So if you are able to do this, if you're able to grind and you're able to gather as many gems as possible, and you're online every single day, that means you're going to also have to have at least one farm account. Now, if you're a free to play player, it's really good to have a farm account. Basically, if you're not sure what a farm account is, and I'm sure you do, if you've played the game for a while, but a farm account is just a second account that you have in your kingdom with the sole purpose of farming out in the open field, getting the resources and then sending them over to your main account, which again, if you're only farming gems with your main account, because you can't send gems from your farm to your main, unfortunately, then you're going to need a farm account to do this strategy. So that's an added layer of work. But again, remember, this is a grind. If you, if you're really free to play and you really don't want to spend money, this is what you're going to have to do on top of the next tip, which is killing barbarians. That's right. Barbarians do have the chance to drop gems. It is a relatively low from what I've seen but it is possible to do and you can in fact have multiple armies killing multiple barbarians all at once in a way oh my goodness what happened in an effort to maximize the odds that you get gems from a barbarian now what i'm going to be showing you on screen now is an instance where a barbarian was very close to my city and he was a bit of a higher level what i was able to do is summon a few lower level barbarians right next to him and now i did get a little bit lucky with the spawning of those barbarians but they spawned within the radius of my Yi Song Ye, who was able to take them out instantly with the AOE. So yes, I did spend the AP to attack that barbarian, but I was able to get the value of about four barbarians from that AP. Now, of course, if you are chaining barbarians, which is a common tactic that a lot of players use, then you're familiar with this sort of strategy. However, doing it this way is you don't really have to go that far, right? You just kind of have to get lucky with the low level barb spawns. Now, low level barbs do have worse rewards. Obviously, you know, if we take a look here at this level 21, now if we take a look here at this level 22, he has the chance of dropping 30 gems, whereas a level one only has the chance of dropping 10 gems. So, you know, obviously there's a little bit of a uh, diminishing return there based on the levels. But again, this is just a quick and easy way to get multiple barb kills for a single barbarian that might happen to just be next to your city. So if you guys never thought to summon low level barbs right next to you, then hopefully that helps you. And you're going to get a lot of free value out of that tip. And 
may the luck be with you that they spawn right next to the more powerful barbarian that might be right there now speaking of barbarians we have to talk about action points right and right now i'm being a bad boy my action points are completely full which means i haven't been spending them down okay i know i know but spending your action points during the proper events is a great way to turn them directly into gems or at least good value now the best places to spend your action points and basically the way that you would save up your action points is you would save them all for an event where where are my action points oh my god i have so many this is actually insane <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be able to spend all of these down. That's actually crazy. But anyway, you want to save the action points for Marauders. Now, Marauders are a pre KVK event, right? So obviously you can see in the top right corner here, we will be going into KVK rather shortly. Why can't I click this? What is happening? What is going on? My game, my game is dead. My game died. That's better. Anyway, we are registered for KVK, which means before KVK starts, there will be a pre KVK set of events. And that is when the Marauders actually spawn out in the open field. And it is pretty well known that that is the best way. What is going on with chat? Why are things just not loading today? Anyway, the Marauders are commonly known as the best way to spend down your action points. Now, what is a good way to get action points for free, right? You may see my action points and be like, oh my God, Omniarch, how do you have so many? Where can I get them? Well, the best way to get them is from your Alliance gifts. That's right. We're coming back to the Alliance gifts. Now you can see here when my Alliance members defeat a fort, there's a chance that I will get some action points here, right? So I can scroll down and it looks like it's probably the most rare of the rewards but it is possible to do so now the best way to do forts in a way to maximize the amount of rewards that your alliance members are getting is a one plus one strategy what does this mean it means that somebody launches a rally on a fort and one player joins them with a full rally and that's it now of course whoever launches the rally has to be able to actually defeat the fort with only 420,000 troops or whatever the you know cap is for that player if you're a t5 player it's very likely that you can defeat a fort especially if you have like Minamoto Tsao Tsao that they just do so much single target damage to pve content it's insane but you can also use somebody like Ethelfled, for example or Lohar who are just really great at defeating pve content for free to play players and that's going to be the best strategy and the reason that you want to do a one plus one is because it only only cost AP for two players right there's only gonna be two players that are in that rally it only costs those players whatever AP it requires to join the rally so instead of having a third player join that rally which was gonna be was gonna be able to defeat the the barbarian for anyway that third player can just start a new rally on a new target and therefore you get more rewards for the entire Alliance and it is actually possible uh, depending on how many people are in your uh, Alliance um, you can actually sort of get more action points than you're spending on some of these barbarian forts which is actually crazy and you know it's also a great way to get free treasures of crystal it's also a free way to get more resources so really good strategy overall and by doing this you're getting a ton of ap which brings us back to killing marauders which brings us back to free gems baby that's what this is all about okay so let's say that you followed me all the way up until now and you're ready you're like all right i'm the arc i'm gonna do this i'm gonna grind out i'm gonna i'm gonna get a farm account and my main is just gonna gather gems and then i'm gonna collect all the ap so during marauders i can grind and, and i can get as many rewards and gems as possible uh, my question to you is just let's just stop stop here for a second okay because we have to do a quick reality check and and what you can expect from doing all these things because everything I've mentioned mentioned in this video is free and it does work and it is a way that you can get maybe 2,000 or more gems per day if you're really seriously grinding now of course you probably can't do that every single day because you probably have a life and you have school or work or whatever uh, but it, it is possible to have days like that where you get tons of gems for free but should you do it right let's say you're farming gems all day with as many marches as you can and you're doing all the events and let's say you get 2000 let's say just for argument's sake you get 2500 gems in a single day by doing this and, and you're really lucky and you're really grinded all day 2500 gems is approximately the amount of gems you would get by buying the special daily special offer all at once two days in a row so that's about ten dollars worth of gems for an entire day's worth of grinding right so it would actually be a better use of your time to see if you can make ten dollars that day <laughs> like it would literally be probably faster for you to like go out on the street and I, I don't know clean somebody's shoes for ten dollars or or for two dollars and do that five times or whatever the case might be right you know that, that's just the amount of time it takes to farm ten dollars worth of gems is insane 
right and so the only people who should be doing this are people who really have nothing else to do they love playing rise of kingdoms they don't have a job and and or maybe their job it, it requires so much downtime that they're just chilling right and they don't want to spend money on rise of kingdoms because money is tight and i get that right i get that i'm not come i'm not saying like oh just spend money duh like obviously that's going to be the best way to do it but for many of you that's not possible but i do encourage you to think about if you're going to spend 12 hours a day playing rise of kingdoms maybe there's a way there's an opportunity there for uh, you to, to i don't know go on fiverr and, and sell a freelance service that you offer i don't know something along those lines right because it just seems crazy to me to be working you know 12 hours on a game like this for ten dollars essentially right it, like you, there's probably an opportunity for you to spend your time better somewhere else and that's going to be the biggest tip of this video but hey some people like grinding for gems some people love chaining barbarians and just seeing how far they can push these strategies as a way of sort of getting back at lilith right like hey i'm a free to play player and this is how good i can do without spending a single dime on your game and to you you know my hat is off to you kudos to you for sure if you find this thrilling and fun to do this which many players do then more power to you that's incredible and hopefully you can maximize the tips that i've given in this video with that being said guys if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the video a ton it gets it into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a video my social media links are in the description below as well as a way to get 10 percent off gamer subs they actually just released a caffeine free version for those of you who want to drink something that's not water late at night and you don't want to be up all night it's really awesome i'm really happy i've been sort of waiting for them to do this so go ahead and link in the description with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni archive i'll talk to you guys again soon peace